So to start this series off, we're gonna do the double underpass. The double underpass is a pass that I'm sure you guys learned day one of jiu-jitsu. I learned it day one of my jiu-jitsu journey. And I'm gonna show you how I do it and how I make it work at Black Belt and all the little details to make it work. Disclaimer or sort of cautionary warning, this video will probably be 10 to 15 minutes long, I imagine, because we're gonna get nitty gritty down into the details. So if, if that's too long for you and you need like potato chip content that you can just keep swiping and feel like you got something, then go ahead and head on over somewhere else. But if you actually wanna get some details to make a technique that's really simple, that you learn as a white belt, work at black belt level, then stick around in this video and me and my lovely assistant, Mr. Adam Wilson, are gonna show you how to take your double under game to another level. Double under pass. Here's what a lot of it, what it used to look like for me. I would get down here, right, we go double unders here, we try to grab the legs together, and then we stack up and try to pass, okay? Stopped working at about like blue belt. And then from there, I started figuring out different ways to do this over the years. Now this is like one of my best passes, and I use this as I'm gonna show you to get around to the back or to side control. So let's start it from the very beginning how I set it up. I don't set it up from up here, okay? I try to start off from a standing position because if the person's down here on his back, I can start to pass and move and get this person off balance so he has to face me and start to turn towards me and then I can start to shoot right underneath here, okay? Another option, sometimes if you get people that butt scoot on you, they sit up like this, turn this way here. I'll get in here nice and low fighting and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll get almost like into a shot position here and he's trying to grab up with both hands here. I like to give a shove, boom, pop and drop right here. Now, let's talk about the initial setup. We're coming from up from some sort of standing pass. Sometimes I'll do this from an over under. Sometimes I'll do this from just that punched position. But I've got a lot of different ways of chaining it together. That is sort of step number one. If you want to take a technique that is really basic and you want to make it effective, a really good way to do that is to chain it together with other techniques that then sort of make it like um, it makes it more advanced because you're attacking multiple different situations at once, right? Now, with that said, the initial drop, the position I'm really trying to get to when I start off this double underpass is gonna be really low. So the problem with the double underpass is if you get here, you're running into the hamstrings and the hips, and if he drives away from me, yeah, he can just snake away from me. So that's the issue. So to get past this, I get down really low. And my goal is gonna to be to get this hand across to the hip. I'll show you how to do this in a second. But by doing this, if he tries to get away from me, it's really difficult because I'm way up under the legs here. Notice where my, I'm underneath here under the hips going across. This is much more difficult for him to get away from me opposed to if I'm up here, okay? So that's like a big deal. That was a big breakthrough for me with my double underpass. Now most of the time, I do a little hip switch here to get across. So a lot of times I'll get into this position where I'm real low and I'm trying to lift, trying to lift, trying to lift. And when he starts to push, I will do a, basically a sit out here underneath. Notice that I'm not like this because then he would be easily able to knock me off balance. My hips are back. So I have forward drive, but I'm still underneath of this leg here. At the same time on this other side, I'm grabbing this hip, this belt, whatever, and I'm pulling it in tight. From here, I can reach across. Now, if it's the gi, I will grab the far lapel wherever I can get a hold of it. I don't need to go up too hard, too high. I actually like to be a little bit lower to keep the elbow tight because it gets rid of the space here. If I'm out like this, he can start to weave his hand in between, give me trouble. If I'm here, I'm closed off, okay? On the other side, so I did my little hip switch here, got across. This hand will be grabbing the belt uh, the gi or just the thigh, anything around here. But again, if it's the gi, I'll make use of it. And again, I'll show you guys the no gi options in just a second. From here, I've got the position I need. Now, I'm not going to immediately try to drive up. I'm just going to come back here. Now, this is not necessarily your traditional double stack pass. This is more of like a one stack pass, but we're setting it up from the initial double under position. Now from here, once I get this grip, I'm holding here and here, I am gonna to start to drive this knee either to his face or over top of the shoulder, okay? If I go to the face, I'm gonna probably try to make it a side control uh, finish. If I'm going over the shoulder, I'm coming around to the back. Now, when we do this, what's usually going to happen, let's say if I go to the face, so we're gonna go for side control. I'm starting to stack him up almost immediately. This right here. That hand pops out to try to push away. And I did in one, one tournament, 
this is how I won the, that, that match. I got here and started literally doing this and just kept driving until the guy got tired, right? Definitely not the way that you want to do it. So here's a little detail that makes it really easy to clear that. Once I get around here, as soon as I run into that hand, I'm going to bring my leg closer, step up, cut with the knee, and slide down into a side control position. Now, what's nice about this is that hip grip that I just had, that I started off with, I still have it. And what's nice about this is as soon as you pass side control, one of the things you have to be really uh, focused on is if he turns back towards me right here, this hip is blocked. Anytime you go to side control, this near side hip and leg, you have to be doing something to block it. This can be your hip, your knee, or your hand. And so I'm starting off with that grip across the hip, which is going to help me block it. And I can get under here and get good control. Also, kind of going back to that, what I call it a shin cutter. Anytime you're in a position where you're passing and you're coming around to side control and this person is like out here like this, especially when you're in like a standing position or almost standing, you can always walk around, bring the knee up and cut. When you do it, the key to doing this is that you have to be able to bring your leg around in a circle. So let's say if I was passing here and I brought it around, I need to bring this other leg in, bring this knee out and around, boom. If I don't bring my leg close enough, I can't take my weight off the leg. But by bringing my leg almost in the middle of my body, I can bring it and I want to go right into the bend of the arm. So one more time on this, right? So again, kind of going through it. I'm starting off standing. I might be going for my Toriando bullfighter. He turns towards me, boom. I shoot in for a double under here. He starts to defend that, boom, shoot underneath here. Again, chaining it together with multiple things. From here, I get my grip across, coming up, beginning to stack, 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 stack. He, gives, he pushes against that hip. I'm gonna bring this leg in, cut across, bang. Drop, and then go. It's money, great pass. Now, let's talk about if I wanna take the back. So this is gonna be a difference. And a lot of times you'll know if you're gonna to wanna to go for this, depending on the style. Adam's not a super, super flexible dude who likes to like invert and everything else. But if you go against someone who's like an inverter, someone that likes to flip upside down and everything else, this next one's gonna be really, really good, okay? So here's an issue that I ran into when I was working with this pass. Chad, my old black belt, he used to uh, do this to me all the time. I would pass, start to stack, they would push off to the turtle, and then there would be this moment where I can see the back. And as a back hunter, I'm a, I hunt for the back, I was excited, I'm like, yes! And then from there I had this grip here, I would try to switch to this one and he's continuing to move and a lot of times I would lose it, right? Happens a lot in competitions. So instead of getting rid of the grip, I'm gonna use the grip the whole time, okay? So we'll check this out. So we get in, we make our switch here. Let's come around to this side right here. All right guys, so we're in the position, I got my lapel set up, okay? I call this, we're gonna be doing kind of like a gi gut wrench. I'll show you what this looks like in no gi in just a minute. As I get ready to come up, I start to drive. Now, if I think I'm gonna go for this, and a lot of times you'll know that you're gonna go for this because the person is like one of those people that just folds in half and they're very comfortable with that, right? So if you start to feel that, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm taking this hand and I'm grabbing onto that hip back here, the, the pant grip, and I'm gonna start to stack this person up and up and over. And what I wanna do is I wanna kinda get him up on his neck and driving this knee over the shoulder. Now, a lot of techniques have a physical cue, meaning you're going to feel something, and that is your moment to execute whatever it is that you're supposed to do. The physical cue for this technique that I'm gonna show you is the hamstring pushing off your shoulders. So when he gets here, to, to adequately do this, he's gonna push off, that moment is where we're going to begin to initiate what I'm gonna get ready to do. So, when I get here, if I start to feel that hamstring push, I lift him up to make it easier. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dive in here. All I'm trying to do is bring my knee in and I'm pulling this gi here. Nothing about this is complicated. The goal of this is to try to get my stomach connected to his lower back. If I do that, I can now get into a truck position, reinforce my position, and I can take the back, okay? So, again, 
The truck is not that complicated to get into. I'm just combining simple stuff together to make an advanced move, okay? The key on this one is the timing. When the guy goes for it, as soon as you feel that hamstring, you have to begin pulling the trigger. Now, sort of a, simply, a simple looking version, if you'll just turn it for just a second. A simple looking version of this is essentially is you're gonna be making a reverse turtle position. I've got this gi going across, and I've got this grip here. All we're doing is shooting our knee in, sitting back to our hip, pulling him to us, and putting your leg inside. Once you get here, guys, really important detail about the truck, reinforce it and keep your knees pinched, okay? If I let my knee wing out like this and he fights against it, I can, he, one, he can reverse the truck on me, which is a problem, right? He, he literally flipped me upside down because we're, we're in kind of a 50-50 position where we both have the same thing. Keep your knee tight like this. This is a little detail my buddy Brandon gave me. Bring your knee in, reinforce it. It'll protect your knees and it makes the position stronger. You have more control of the hips. And when you want to get into the, the back mount, you stomp to expose the back, okay? Next, we shift and we're gonna get a grip on the shoulder. A shoulder hook is what uh, some of the 10th planet people call it. Now from here, we'll get more into this later when I do a rear naked choke, which again, another basic move, but I do a few things with it. We shift forward and then we go right in for the choke or back mount, okay? A lot of times I go for the choke as we'll talk about in another episode. So from here, let's go through this again, this time with Nogi. So part of the reason why my Jiu Jitsu is so simple is because one, I want it to be transferable to Gi or no Gi. I don't want there to be any hiccup when I, when I do one or the other. And also from a fighting standpoint, it always has to be simple enough to where I could easily transfer it to a fight situation and simplify it. So we're in no Gi now. Nothing changes. I can still do bullfighter passes to off balance them. I can still shoot into over unders and I still get down here nice and low. Now, notice what I'm doing. I'm down low. I don't have any grips now. So it's gonna be all on the hips here to initially. When I make my shift here, the difference is gonna be now I'm gonna use an S grip here. What's nice about the S grip here, opposed to a gable, is the S grip allows me to, this ability to pinch my elbows together. This, not as much. So when I'm getting across, I can elbow pinch depending on what I need. Sometimes I can be dire, sometimes I can be looser. From here, I got the grip. Now, when I come up, it's the same idea. I'm either going to drive across, and again, that wouldn't, if I wanted to go across and do the windshield wiper, it's no big deal. Here's what's going to change with the, the gut, the gi version of the gut wrench, right? It's because earlier I was grabbing like this, this time I'm here. I want to keep this lock here by the hip here, okay? I don't want it out in front. If it's out in front, it's way too easy for him to break because he can start to use his hands here and fight. Down here, if I'm down here like this, super hard to get to, protected, I'm going to get him up. Now, from here, no difference. He starts to push off, boom, lift, shoot the knee forward, pull him into us, nice and tight. And check this out, sometimes you'll run into this situation where you can't quite get it in, push this leg down to hook, and there you go. Now, you let go, shoulder hook, and we go right in. So let's look at this one time through at a smooth pace all the way to the back. So I've got a guy that might be here. I'm going, boom, shooting in here for the double under. He starts to push my head away. Bang, dropping in, stacking up here. That's it. It's basic. Now, think about the things that we did there that take that basic move and make it into advanced stuff, right? One is the timing. I'm, I'm, everything's timed. I've done that move thousands and thousands of times. I know how it works. So as people are doing something, I'm very conscious of the feelings of their body and what I need to do next. I'm combining multiple moves together. So instead of it being something where they only have to worry about one thing, I'm attacking with multiple different options that are simple moves, but when combined together, it creates a, a multi-pronged attack, which is tough to defend because each one of the standing passes, the double under passes, the, double, uh, the over under passes, all of those have to be defended a different way. And so by doing that, you're, you're making that person have to shift to, to, uh, and change versus simply attacking with one pass at a time. That's a big deal for your guard passing. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people use their guard passing where it's like one guard pass at a time. 
use your guard passing like anything else, like your jiu-jitsu where you go like from guard, you're like, okay, triangle, arm bar, you know, omoplata, you chain them together. Same thing for your guard passing. And then again, I have different options depending on where the guy's going. Uh, but again, I really like getting to the back. That's my main spot. And so I have ways to get there. And again, I've addressed some issues with the turtle and the person getting away. And so that's the move. That's my double under stack slash single stack pass that I learned essentially day one of Jiu Jitsu that I've converted over the years and made into an advanced technique that I use at black belt competitions and rolls with tough black belts. And I really use it. So hopefully that was useful to you guys. If you're trying to use a double stack pass and you're trying to give that a boost, hopefully this video is useful to you. Also, shameless plug, if you would like to go deeper into this kind of guard passing stuff that I just showed you, you can check the links below. I have a guard passing instructional that has been out for a couple years now. It's really good. It goes into everything that I do, all the different setups, and a bunch of different setups and options that I can't show here just for time constraints because I don't want to go on for like 30 minutes with this thing. So with that said, I hope this was useful to you. I am finished. Adam. Adam.